ask so many fascinating questions and we're two or three minutes or so away from kickoff. You know, can Owen Farrell be the ace puppeteer? Can Wales stop England scoring early? In which case, how will England respond in that situation? Sam, what's your take on how this game's going to pan out? Oh, I, I think it's definitely going to be within one score either way. And um, I, I said before, I think the game's going to be on emotion. And you can't win games on emotion, but when you've got two teams who've got world-class players, tactically went very well prepared, I think it's whoever turns up in the right frame of mind is going to take this game. And the, the, the toll of the week from Monday to Saturday can be a huge strain on some players. It was who can manage that the best and be in the right frame of mind can kick off today. Point was made about five members of the England side experiencing this for the first time. Is that the kind of sort of the, the one of the where the pendulum can just turn one way or the other because of that? Yeah, possibly. But I think the guys who have played, that's part of the deal. Owen Farrell's a very experienced captain now, a number of experienced players. You've got to control that emotion, control what you can on the field and keep going. You know, the first 10, 20 minutes is going to be incredibly fast and frenetic. The game's for 80. I think last time England were here, they won it very late. So Trust, them, trust themselves, trust what you do, and keep on going through it. Yeah, I agree with Martin. I think we haven't touched upon it yet, but I think both teams have been very, very efficient when they've got the ball in the contact area. And I'm biased, but our back row matchup today is fascinating. You know, I think Mark Wilson and Tom Curry have been revelations for England in the opening games. You know what I believe in Apollo can do, but I think for that back row, this is the biggest test they've had so far. You know, Navidi, Tipperick, and Moriarty are really going to test out this English team. The teams, I'm sure, will be in the dressing room. They'll get the, the, the tap on the door any moment now from the referee, and then they're out. What are these moments like, Jerry? It's what, what is it, the play the game. It's exciting. You can't wait to get out and play, especially in a stadium like this. I absolutely loved it. And at days like this, you wish you were you were back the, out. The, the noise just... when you come out is incredible. You know, and that, that's probably the biggest emotional moment of the game, I think, when you come out with that noise. Well, I, 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 is anybody going to dissent from picking their country? Jerry? No. 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 Go on, and stick with Wales. Wales. <laughs> <laughs> but he had to think. OK, well, here we go. Anticipation, expectation, fascination. Wales against England. It's a rugby occasion like nothing else and described for you today by Brian Moore, Jonathan Davis and Eddie Butler. The last few yards where you could hear yourself think. The last few yards of a little sanctuary just got to keep your thoughts together all the things you've prepared in the week all the tweaks you've made for this one game in particular keep it all together because you know from this point onwards there is a storm awaiting you are about to go to exhaustion and beyond it's a great place to be Quite like it, it, quite like it in World Rugby. Alan Wynne Jones, the captain of Wales. Wales at home, looking for a 12th consecutive victory, a record for them. England looking to beat Wales for the sixth time in succession. That would be a record. Good afternoon, Brian. Good afternoon, Edward. Time to stop talking, time to start doing. Emotion will play a part, but more importantly, thinking, thought under pressure. Make sure you make the right decisions. Well, this is why you play the sport for days like these. Fantastic atmosphere, fantastic day in the city. A lot of English supporters here as well. You know, now the talking stops.
Justin Tipperick and Ross Murray, Moriarty at number eight. Gareth Davis and Gareth Anscombe are the chosen halfback pair. Liam Williams remains at fullback. Josh Adam and George North, the threats on the wing. Threats all over the park from England. What good form they've been in this season. Power up front, Courtney Laws in the second row. The birthday boy, 30 today. Manu Tuilangi continues his recovery, his comeback in the centre. Johnny May, the prolific scorer on the left wing. 12 tries in the last 12 internationals. The chance will come for all the replacements. Keep an eye out for Joe on a single when he comes off the bench for England. The last little rituals. The last little preparations. You're on your own out there, the players, but all part of a team. The team effort is everything. Gareth Anscombe wears the mythical number 10 shirt for Wales. Up against him, the captain of England, Owen Farrell, who has orchestrated brilliantly what England have done so far this season. 123rd cap today for Alan Wynne jones Jakob Paper of South Africa is today's referee. And what a game for the South African. Wales versus England in round three of the Six Nations. Ross Moriarty, the catch, the first charge, it won't be his last of the day. Gareth Davis waits at scrum half for Wales. Wales will keep the ball on the pitch as much as possible and hope they can get Billy Vunipola down early. Kyle Sinclair. Benyon's the hooker. Tom Curry. Tackled by his opposite number, Justin Tipperick. Ben Young's manages to get the ball back to uh, Wilson in the back row. And Mark Wilson, what a season as he's had. Had to wait his chance to play for his country, but so far it's gone very well. Not so well there for England. The cheer will tell you it's a Welsh put-in. 
It is, and we will see whether one side can get an advantage here. If they do, it will be significant. England using a 1-3-1 system to take the ball forward. And there you see Moon just taking his eye off the ball at the vital second. Yeah, you know, they've set their stall out early, they've got the big runners. Out. You know, Curry had a, a wide ball down the right-hand side, but defence is good so far. Just uh, unsure there who was taking the ball in and a, and a spilt ball, so first scrum of the game. Eddie Jones you, in the dark top, Steve Borthwick alongside him, the, the line-out guru. We're right, pausing. Like we are. Jack Knoll receiving attention, the England right wing. Scrum down, here's an interesting one. Exeter against Exeter in the front row. Well, Jack Knoll, he's Exeter too, but uh, in front of him. Thomas Francis on the Welsh tight head. And Ben Moon, Exeter loose head. Number seven, yes. I think it's a penalty here. And no, no arms tackle, maybe, I'm not sure. Have to wait and see, but it's definitely going to be a penalty, I think. Justin Tipperick goes in. There are arms there. Well, Quite low arms. That's a that's Seven. a poor decision. I don't think there's anything in that. No, me. You know, it's a contact sport. It's a good tackle. None of the players respond to it. Wasn't high either. No. I think he's just led to the shoulder. So, our first opportunity. Elliot Daly into the game. Elliot Daly. A sort of long-range expert. Just that this would still be in Owen Farrell's range, wouldn't it? It would usually, yes. Well, it will be interesting. Now the officials appear to have set that walk, that uh, kite mark for tackling. Yeah, look. Whether they'll I've be got consistent. The I'm surprised they didn't yes. have a look at it. I think it's on the run, isn't it? They try and speed the game up, so they try and do it on the run. But I can see by Thanks the faces it. of Sean Edwards and uh, Gatlin. You know, they're not happy with that decision. Momentum had just gone to Wales with a scrum, and now it's an opportunity for England to start well. Edit Daly, early chance, pushed it, got a long way left, Gareth Anscombe catches. Sort of justice is done. Did you say something, Jerome? Brian. <laughs> okay, thank you. It's all relative, Eddie. Yeah. Wales, no points on the board, two and a half minutes played. Normally, England have scored by now. Mark Wilson again. Change of direction. Owen Farrell, that's gone straight up in the air. Still might land for Jack Knoll. Lay on. And then Josh Navini for Wales, turnover ball. Jonathan Davis to Rob Evans. Gets the pass away to Alan Wynne-Jones, to Ken Owens, the hooker. Takes on Courtney Laws. <laughs> might say, were there any arms in that tackle? Hadley Parks. Held up by Kyle Sinclair. Good tackle by the prop. Owens again this time. Gives the pass to Anscombe, who drops it. Advantage England. Wilson to Farrell to Ben Youngs. It's the England kicking over. game. Looking for grass. Josh Adams covering well for Wales. Hadley Parks makes a little half yard through the tackle. Ben Moon does a little counter rucking. All helps. Johnny May. Back of white. It's gone loose. Elliot Daly. Good inside pass to second row George Cruz. Last. It was his birthday yesterday. 28. Yep. Corey Hill wearing four in the red yep. scrum cap is in the second row for Wales. Adam Beard is on the bench to start with. Back of white. Tom Francis gathers for Wales. Alan Wynne Jones picks up and carries into the England half. Roll goes up for offside. Advantage, Wales. Oh. Now then, was that the late challenge? Jack Knoll takes it. We're going back for the original penalty. 
That's what you expect. If you're a standoff, I get to stand up. You have a chance to have a shot on your opposite number. number. Four is off five. Just watch. There's the offside. They jump. And number seven. Uh, I think. No, it's offside. That's perfect. I was it. And here he is. Here's the kick. And that's not late. That's not late. That's on slow motion. That's not late. <laughs> it's very interesting. There's two kicks uh, for England. You know, they've, the kicking has been exceptional. The two up and under, the halfbacks won't have been happy with. So, and they haven't regained possession, which was so crucial in their previous games. Well, every kick's either been too short or too long. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's presumably within Gareth Anscombe's range. Or maybe not. He's gone deep into the England 22. Wales throw in oh, well, at the line out. Yeah. That's a good tackle. See, Eddie, you should have played rugby league and then you'd understand <laughs> these things. Right. Do you think that was a penalty? Uh, no, no, I don't. No. You do? You think it was a penalty? No, I don't think no. it was a penalty. No. No. You've done soft, Eddie. You've no, played, I didn't say you've it was. You've played as well, for God's sake. <laughs> that was Enough. positively early Enough. by Pontypool standards. Enough. Ken Owens to throw into the line out. Mm. Beautifully claimed by George Cruz. It has been a source of concern for Wales, the attacking no line-out. Tom Francis, Corey Hill piling, a bit of counter-rucking. England have to send in extras, Jamie George and Alan Wynne jones share a little exchange. Not much ground gained by England, but perhaps they don't fear the line-out quite so much now. Well, much better to have a line out in this position. That is short for throw, it. but if you see where the jumpers are being put up, Alan Wynne Jones is starting from position behind Cruz anyway. Justin Tipperick, who is such a good source of line out ball. Josh Adams off his wing, pick up and drive. England try and hold him up through Tom Curry. Here's Corey Hill into England 22. Rob Evans with the pickup. Josh Navidi hovering. Justin Tipperick first there. Hill again. Rob Evans again. Oh, Ross Moriarty. Yeah. Wales are outnumbered for the moment. Get up. And England have the putting. Well, that's a problem. They run out of patience there because England aren't committing hardly any numbers to the ruck. So they've got to pick and drive and pick and drive. They went one win. out and they were waiting and absolutely hit Moriarty in the tackle and turned the ball over. Yeah. Clearly won the collision here. Yeah. Two on one. Well then, let's go. And you've not only got that, you've got the late support runners. Once players get in and around the ball, very difficult to lift them off. Yeah, England have used the short side, you know, on, the, on, the, on the occasion they've had the ball, Ben Youngs has gone short, questioning the, the blindside defence of Wales. Noisy in here. Once they get, you know, organised and get them in the strut, there's a very big blind side here. If you look, there's the, the high shot, but on England's right, Noel is just hogging the touchline. One on one on 15 metres, isn't it? Yeah, and there'll be a 8-9 maybe coming down the short side. Well, if, if the emotionally unstable Carl Sinclair can get the right hand side forward. Take the ball out. It's gone down. Billy Vunipola to Ben Youngs. Liam Williams. Liam Williams doing what Liam Williams does superbly well through three tackles. Now Ross Moriarty, a better starting position on the charge before he took the ball. Oh, 
Josh Adams in pursuit. It's landed to Elliot Daly. Ken Owens back with the tackle. Josh Levy there. Courtney Laws over the ball, protecting it for Ben Youngs. Sinclair, good quick pass to Tom Curry. Rob Evans has to let it go. Henry Slade to Rooney Pola. Good tackle by Corey Hill. But there's the strength and the power of England's Leave number eight. Leave it now. Gareth Davis chased down Owen Farrell. And again, no, back on his feet. A little counter drive by England just gives them a few seconds of comfort. Liam Williams comes forward for it. It bounces. Anscombe read it well. Chased down by Tom Curry. Anscombe escapes. Away from Courtney Laws. Adams to Navidi to Rob Evans. Gareth Davis back in position at scrum half. Hadley Parks to Alan Wynne Jones. No more England. Right Last on feet. the halfway line. Hadley Parks just delays his pass to Ross Moriarty. See, no one in the ruck, one player on the ground for England. Gareth Anscombe has gone back, but it's scrum half Gareth Davis who takes on the kick. George North as well claimed by Owen Farrell. Ross. Courtney Luno, he leaves it for Tom Curry. Good tackle. Rob Evans makes the tackle. England kicking a lot from the base. And they're chasing well. Youngs again. There is grass now. Liam Williams. Laws with the follow up tackle. Well, the ball Again, is staying a lot on the field. It's there for Gareth Davis. Has to get a move on. He kicks. Not, a, not the quickest chase because Tom Francis was the chasing winger. The prop, that is. England in possession. Billy Vunipola, the distributor. Elliot Daly. A change of direction by Ben Youngs. The top spin kick, which will kick on towards touch. And we can pause for a breather. Well, apart from that particular kick, the distinguishing feature so far is that the two teams kicking and chasing games haven't worked at all as they wanted. Clear gap, please. But England are prepared to kick now. Look, they've put pressure on the line. Now, this has been Wales' Achilles heel. They've got to get Perfect. this right. But they're patient. They're Pull slow ball. So they're kicking the ball away because there's no way you can break the defensive lines down. Will they look for the lightest player on the, in the Welsh... Jumping position, no. Justin Tipperick is not going up yet. He is, and he gets hands to it. Free okay, ball kick. Down. Ball down. Tom Curry, held by Navidi. Billy Vuni Pola at full pelt. Courtney Laws. No way through for him, but England pressing seven metres out. Lost. It's been slowed down a little bit, but this is still a very dangerous position. Oh. Forward pass. I didn't really understand that. You know, you got Henry Slade coming in. He's not the usual cross ball player, and he just overrun it a little bit. I think I don't think Henry Slade was expecting he was running as a decoy to get oh, round the back. One. And if you put the ball pass. wide, you've got two of your range of space. So if you hit and settle, I can work the rest. And if you're going to bring someone short, surely you bring two of short. No. It's a ferocious right. start. Defence is. is just incredible. Both sides not committing to the ruck. There's no spaces out there. And that's yeah. why the scrum halves are kicking a lot. They don't want to play under pressure with slow ball. So give the possession, give the ball away and a good chase. Sorry, foot, please. No score. Coming up to a quarter of an hour played. Someone saying don't give anything away there. 
Set. Three, two, three. Well, Saxon, I think, Brian. Yeah. Yeah, Peter okay. will uh, yeah. reset. I'm, I'm going as loud as I can. Lads, it's... Right, pull it. I think, Gary, we've got to say apologies to people at home if you heard anything that you shouldn't have then. Don't know why I'm apologising, I didn't do it. Crouch! Death to it, Brian. Boyne! Set! Into squeeze! Gareth Davis to feed. Pretty well struck. Ross Moriarty protects. But Wales concede the penalty and Kyle Sinclair receives the congratulations. He's dropping the sun, number one. Well, that would be interesting to see. Only the two props know who actually dropped that. And they'll both lie, so you'll never get the truth. But the referee or the officials will be looking to see probably whether it was hinging or who lost the bind first. If you see a replay, we may get a clue about that. Oh, Brian. <laughs> I don't think that's right either. No, I. My limited experience of the front row, that certainly doesn't really look like a penalty. The ball is at the back of the scrum as well, so first opportunity for England. His first kick, not England's first kick. Elliot Bailey missed with one. Farrell. Will take a little longer than Elliot Bailey. Take the lead at Principality Stadium. Penalty by Owen Farrell. Wales nil, England three. Well, England go ahead with a rather arbitrary decision there. Nothing in it at all at the moment. Neither side actually managing to get any fluency. And principally because their kicking games are not working as expected. As usual, George North, Gareth Davis lead the charge. Alan Wynne Jones the with the tackle on Henry Slade. Billy Rudipola, Ken Owens, Josh Gavidi. Tackle complete. Other tacklers. Ben Young's down towards Liam Williams. Gareth Anscombe inside him. Josh Adams taking on Manu Tulani on the outside. Good pass to Hadley Parks. The switch to play by Wales. No more! No! Chip it. Good hit. Not the heaviest of the ball runners for Wales, but it's there for Navidi. To Alwyn Jones. Forward. Forward. <laughs> Play on. Liam Williams. Tom Curry. Over He's on. The ball. There's the ball. There's the ball. He's not on it. Has to leave it. Curry was near then on a turnover. Rob Evans. No hand. Last no. It's there for Gareth Davis. Anscombe back in the pocket. Goes high. Josh Adams. Too long. Play on. Gareth Anscombe play and numbers to his left. Liam Williams to George North. North. Excellent tackle by Tom Curry. On the leading try scorer on the Bye. field, Tom Adams. Yeah. Sorry, Tom Francis. <laughs> <laughs> it's there though. Well delivered by the prop. Corey Hill inside to Liam Williams. Francis again. <laughs> yeah, it's 
passing off. flat England up quickly. Tipperick, oh. and again, it's the double hit that ends just in Tipperick's advance abruptly. Jonathan Davis. No width to Wales yet. Not even Alan Jones can run through two tacklers. Still Wales possession, though. Slow ball for Gareth Davis. Liam Williams. And at long last, and maybe this is more important than anything, Wales have a reward, a penalty. I tell you, you know, England's line yes. speed is fantastic. You know, the Tuck long, wide press on the base contest. of the ruck is not on we because are. They are gonna, you are going to get smashed. And Wales did exceptionally well there after being, you know, <laughs> savage in uh, defence. But they just managed to keep possession, right kept it, and they decided not to kick, and they've been rewarded by a penalty. But it's such an intense test encounter. But you know, there's not, nothing not happening. they succeed running unreconstructed one outs into two men. You can't see that working for 18 minutes, can you? When no. You're... Well, that's where, you know, they'll try and tire each other out and then the defences will open up a little bit. You'll catch a hooker. A great tackle again. you catch a hooker in the wrong position, you'll have a go at him. You know, the forwards will tire. And then all of a sudden, the line speed will go down. And that's for both sides. At the moment, it's just like battering into each other. Oh, God, look at that. Oh. Wales go long, Corey Hill at the tail, good ball. He's set what? up them all, Justin Tipperick comes away, delivers the pass to Hadley Parks, try to slide on the outside of Tuilani, he's done pretty well, Hadley Parks. Ken Owens. Tom Curry, again the tackler. Navidi takes it on. Wales tight around the ball, again. Josh Adams is out wide, Hadley Parks comes wide to the left, but the forwards happy to drive it on. Owens again, Tipper, Hill. Advantage, penalty for Wales. Replay. Anscombe, one for Hadley Parks. Hadley Parks in touch, back to the penalty. Number three. You have. No arms tackling, well, see? He's consistent, isn't he? Same as that tackle. No arms. Or no rep. It's like the first time England haven't done a double hit, double tackle. Yeah. He's put a shift in, hasn't he? So far. There was just a second there where Wales could have at gone least, right. At least there's got to be some possibly sort of had right. space it's and numbers. Matter, so Gareth Davis just delayed slightly on the pass. I think Martin in studio highlighted before the game, you know, they do get caught with a blitz defence. It's so difficult to maintain it going through phases, the speed in which they, you know, they, they line the defence up. Sometimes you get caught narrow because you can't get back. You. And that's what we are look for is, okay. you know, a narrow defensive line from England, see if they can get on the outside. But at the moment, you know, both defences are top quality. Gareth Hanscom levels the scores. Three apiece. Well, it was a kick to nothing. He knew the penalty was coming. Yeah, you'd been, you wouldn't have been happy with that kick. It was a free play. Farrell, high, deep. Ross Moriarty waits. Jones, the angle better for Gareth Davis, but I don't suppose he'll be going for touch. And he needs a guard there, Cruz is getting very close to him. Elliot Daly, Billy Vunipolo, important tackle, Moriarty gave Corey Hill good assistance there, Courtney Laws. 
it's England's turn to be Play thrown on. backwards. Play on, says the referee, thought about the forward pass, but it's England in possession, safely enough. Owen Farrell. <laughs> Liam Williams read it pretty well, but it was a... He let it bounce, which was a risk. I tell you what, they're kicking very early. England aren't going through the phases a lot, are they? And then it, you know, well, that's been a feature of the first two games, actually. Yeah, yeah. Let me deal with them. Don't step across. That's right. No, that's fine. Alibi Jones wins. More. Josh Navidi takes over control, then Ken Owens. Stay there. Keep your mind, keep your mind. Once. It's gone forward. Oh. Crumbs for England become a real attacking opportunity. Henry Slade, tackled by Jonathan Davis. For no reason, the ball suddenly became England's. Vunipola. Minus midfield offside. Penalty coming to England. Young's Tom Curry. Young's with the switch of direction to Courtney Laws. Oh. Hadley Parks read it well. Tom Curry comes away with it. And the first try is scored. And it's for England. Well, he's delighted. He should be because he spotted. The fact that the Welsh defence had lined up right, two or three of the players you would have expected to be in the guard and the bodyguard positions were not there. I don't know why they went wide. I think that I'm going to look at it to see where the knock on is. That's, that's Courtney Laws gets a hand in there, and that's not a knock on. It's play on from this area. Well, I can't see anything on from that. Please go back. Go but look, no guard or bodyguard yes. there. No one. Just in Tipperick, not in the right position. Back turned. We have checked on Moriarty the couldn't get to because Tipperick was there. Yeah, Tipperick got his back turned there. He spotted the ball, he picked up and went. It's very, very good play by Tom Curry. But also, Wales had the opportunity to clear it, you know, from the line-up. But Courtney Law's got his hand in there. Owen Farrell adds the two points at England. Go into the lead for the second time. Wales 3, England 10. Very good play by, you know, Curry, young Curry, to spot the gap and go through. But Wales will be disappointed. They had possession and just turned it over. And you can't do that, you know, to such a good England side. Can't turn possession over in your own 22 area. The reason he got there in the first place was the blockers in front of the ball weren't in the right position he shouldn't have been able to get anywhere near it well judged by Henry Slade but he runs straight into Jamie George then and that lead gives Wales a chance to hold him up Lay on. England get away with a bouncing ball out of the breakdown on their own 22 what does Ben Youngs do here oh, he kicks it into Take touch though no Just keeps it on the field Liam Williams Jack Noel with the tackle. England have to be careful with Liam Williams. If you give him too much room, he'll make you pay. Make it very accurate to him. Gareth Hanscom. Elliot Daly with a bit of space. And Daly is the same as well. Hadley Park tackle and Justin Tipperick with the tackle. Cruz. Vuni Pola, it's gone loose from him, well gathered by Mark Wilson. Nothing formed. Back on White, play on! Ben Evans, Rob Evans picks up the scraps for Wales. It's on the air to go. Anscombe, Parks, delayed. Tom Curry makes the tackle. Great turnover, Curry. Turnover. Billy Booney Pola. Farrell with his sort of wrong foot for Josh Adams. Adams keeps it alive to Liam Williams. Some of the crowd ball that was forward. Couldn't tell from here. That's a brilliant kick by Farrell. 
you know, slow ball. But again, this guy is having a huge influence on the game. He makes the tackle, he stops the overlap, I'll and then down, steals yeah. it. An England attack, and now it's England again in a very good attacking position. The thing about those kicks from Farrell is he just keep pressure on. Billy Vunipola not often used as a line-out jumper, but it Get provides off, right. safely enough. George Cruz held up by Alan Jones and Justin Tipperick. Tipperick still. He was a tackler. Yeah. More ball, called by the referee, Wales put in. He's calling him on very, very quickly, but, you know, it's consistency that the, the players want, and he has been consistent. He's called more very early on a few occasions now. You, you can feel England just slowly taking control of this game. This is, Bring it, boys. this is the turnover at the scrum. Just watch, Courtney Laws right, gets in. his arm in there. I'm not sure that I'm not sure that's not a knock on, you know. Think, definitely, definitely went backwards and, and from Courtney Laws. Here we go, Seconds! It goes backwards in fine. Inviting side over there for Gareth Davis. Go, 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 go. He's come the other way. Gareth Anscombe, long to Gareth. Jonathan Davis, George North gets away from Jack Knoll. Ben Youngs with the tackle. Here's Justin Tipperick, held by Vuni Pola. Parks. Curry. Release to to Elangi in front of him. Ross Moriarty. All fight! Rob Evans, good foot, <laughs> good footwork. Release to you! <laughs> Josh Lavidi out the way. That's good. Liam Williams on a slightly different angle, and uh, Wales have sinked lost backwards. Lost the Just ball, backwards. but it went backwards, says referee Paper. No, a chance. Jonathan Davis, long to George North. Tuilangi comes across. North gets away from him. Tuilangi goes back again. The oh, captain, good, good hands. hands. Better hands. Navidi against Sinclair. A good pass. Wales flowing now. And it's Henry Slade who comes away with it. And's come back. Johnny May, Josh Adams back. The game opens up. First Wales, now England. Side there. Now the kick. Liam Williams goes back. Oh, didn't let him get up. He doesn't have to let him get up. Owen Farrell over the ball. He's doing well there, Williams. England have stolen it. Exactly. In England. Right in. And he's working the side this time. He's gone from the side. I tell you what, that's clever play again. You see England, once yeah. they've got possession from, from a side. kick, and then it's you. another kick the because side. they know the full-back is committed. He did not fall on you. <laughs> We've got the penalty. Yeah, yeah, no, for six. Sorry, is it first breakdown? Yeah. Well, Liam Williams is complaining, but the player does not have to let him get up. He just has not to fall on him when he's on the ground. Which I thought he did, but anyway. I just thought yeah. <laughs> they both went for the ball. Oh, 32 Fine minutes, in. 33 minutes played, and... Everybody's blowing a bit. Wales are back in their own pass. So they look more tired, but England uh, look tired too. So it's a brilliant passage of play there by England and Wales. The charge down, then the chip. It's a lovely this way to kick it. as well. Yeah. Brilliant. That yep, that's the middle. It's fine. It's fine. Right, stay there. The question is, uh, did Owen Farrell let Liam Williams get back up? Yeah. He doesn't have to let him get up. The mall. Corey Hill, but he can't tackle him on the ground, can he? No, he can't fall on him. Once. That's what he did. Dunn is falling in close stay there. hands on him. Stay there, stay there. Stay there. Kyle Sinclair, under scrutiny, but allowed to stay where he was. Johnny May hasn't seen much of the ball yet. The defensive net closes around him. Jamie George, One the hooker. Right. Navidi yeah. with the interception for Wales. Ken Owens plays scrum half. Rob Evans, Anscombe. 
to J Justin Tipperick. Not even in broken plays no. there. Penalty advantage, it was nearly there to be scooped up by Billy Vunipola. Just a little bit ahead of the game. Small margins, isn't it? Such small margins. He thought the ball was out. It looked like the ball was out. Unfortunately, for Billy, it wasn't. Well, and everything now, is happening so right. quickly. And now, One of the problems that Wales have got is, even if England are so narrow, when you've got George not North, who's not out and out pace, not your Jack Norris jockeying him, Say, all right, I'll give you 15 yards space, but I'll catch you. I just think, you know, that was a huge reprieve for Wales, that is because, you know, they've been under the, the cosh a little bit, and that wasn't out. But Wales have been under the cosh the last 10 minutes. England have turned the screw up, and now this is a relieving penalty for Wales. All right. Now, important throw for Ken Owens, and Wales, oh. this is the sort of position where the line-out's going to arrive. Just in Tipperick, down, oh, Gareth Davis, knock on, okay. so again, it, it's well, the we're... set piece in a good position for Wales, this. causing problems. Well, Wales have not had much ball, and certainly not in England territory, and just before half-time, oh, you would yeah. need a score there of some sort. Here we go. Yes, as I said earlier, that's their Achilles heel, and now, at this level, you might not get the ball back for uh, quite a few minutes, and as you said, Brian, you know, they needed possession, they needed to go through the phases no, and go. just tire the England defence out. Let's go. Well then, let's go. I mean, the tremendous pressure from both sides is causing some errors, but the majority of unforced ones in vital points are coming from Wales. My mate, Ross. In the centre for Brentwood, Ross, you know. Not a very good one to be honest, but if you do that again, you better listen now. If you do that again, I will start with a penalty. Little Yako Piper in the middle of the Giants there. I'm doing my best. And they've all got something to say. <laughs> We're talking about Carl Sinclair, already made, he's leading the tackle count, 16 already. Grouch! Scripps! He got it! Curry 13, Cruz 13. No Welsh tackling in double figures because they've been going backwards chasing kicks. Wales turn over ball to scrimmage. Oh, Gareth Hanscom kicks. Ben Young's covers. Ben Young's under his own posts. Wales pile in, so it's close to the England line. England uh, recover it. Jack Knoll acting scrum half. Wales will must must apply pressure. Knoll comes away with it. Five no, metres out. It. He's done well there. That five metres could be vital. Just giving you enough time and space for the kick. Ben Youngs goes burrowing. Alan Jones tries to make life uncomfortable. Billy Vunipola. Five and a half metres away from their own goal line, England. Just trying to work a position out for, make it easier for the clearing kick. Ben Youngs is going to take the responsibility. There will be time for the line-outs, not that it's wow. needed. Johnny May with a follow-up tackle. Liam Williams against Tom Curry. Tries to free the... The left arm for the pass, not able to do so. Ross Moriarty in the middle of the field. Ken Owens has to be careful because there's Tom Curry coming Leave in for yet another tackle. He has been brilliant this first half, Tom Curry. Judge, if you can't underestimate the importance no. of May's no, chase no. there. Only one England player made it and put the man on the ground. Well, he'll start again. Play the ball, don't mock it. Oh, yes. They've got to try and get outside that four man blitz defence, haven't they? That's what they've got to try and do. Jonathan Davis, for the first time, has a little run himself. Mark Wilson with the tackle. The ball bobbles out again, but it might be good for Wales. Good power, Gareth Davis. His hands just let him down. Danger. 
Josh Adams with a follow-up tackle. More scrappy play. Did that go forward? No, it didn't. Danger. Johnny May with a chance. Kicks ahead. Hadley Parks goes back and has to speed up because the speedster is there. May first there. Advantage England. Well, Johnny May has not had much to do, but contributions like that make a big difference. Hadley Parks, you could see, he's almost treading water on this chase. Brilliant play by Young's spots me. Look, he's got he's got nearly 12 meters on him to start with. I think Hadley Parks does it right, lets him get up so he can hike him into touch. Now, this is Blood. seminal for both teams if England record a try here huge bonus just before half time and conversely obviously Wales absolutely need to prevent any form of score at all Corey Hill is the player receiving attention but I remind you that all came again from an error from Wales handling error just say that again A huge 10 seconds, huge 10 seconds, the context of the game. 10-3, you think, you know, England deserved to be in front because they pressurised Wales, they could have scored the one try, but now this smarter. is... So, let's oh, think, you know, those little differences, as you said, Brian, the mistake, and now look where they end up, great kick and chase for Johnny May. A little bit of captain on captain there, and Jack Knoll, who was acting scrum half, did well. We have blood, I think just about every player has a nick, a cut, something seeping. Something yeah. seeping. Wounds. You take this line, yeah. Right, Brian, what, what will we as the uh, you two are forwards? Will they compete and try and nick the ball or will they just stand the ground and drive? Stand and drive, I think. Well, are you ready? Yeah. Well, it looks like that's what they're going to do. A good challenge, Whoa. Corey Hill went up and he's quickly back into position. Jamie George, though, has it. In comes Johnny May to add his weight, and the mall starts to move. In come the centres, in comes Owen Farrell. Need to move that ball back one. Jamie George in control of it. Good He's defense. taken to ground at last. Alan Wynne Jones did very, very well there. <laughs> there aren't many English players left out in the backs. It's Kyle Sinkler, the prop, no, who's out there. No. Ben Moon watches it go behind him. Farrell kicks. Liam Williams checks his whereabouts, Jack Knoll, George North gathers. Just get it into touch. Re We're into overtime, <laughs> Wales fun. can get this off the park, recoup for half-time. They'll take a deficit into the changing rooms, but they held out against that last England attack at half-time at Principality Stadium. Wales, the home team, three, England on the road, ten. Well, lung busting, ferocious, savage on occasions. You just can't take your eyes off this, though. And somebody who had his eyes on the prize was Tom Curry there. When nobody else saw the ball being spare, he was pounced on it like a lion. And that is the difference between the sides. As darkness descends on the Principality Stadium, the roof, as you can see, is open and England lead by seven points. And uh, we'll be talking about those statistics over the course of this half-time interval because England have very much played a similar game to the one they did in the opening two matches of this championship. And at the moment, just about, it's doing them proud. And very interestingly, the England team have stayed on the pitch. Martin. It's like back in the day, yeah, I, I, don't, I, I don't know why. I think um, they'll have an echo at Owen for kicking that ball. <laughs> well, at the yeah. end, when he yeah, should have right, gone for a yeah. drop goal. Yeah. I think, well, they're going off now, yeah, so he's obviously had a little bit of a captain's chat and, and off they go. Well, interesting, it'll be interesting to know what he actually said there, but generally, Sam, what do you think? It's been what we thought. Uh, England have kicked a lot of ball, 
They've been brilliant coming off the line and incredibly physical. So it's just, you know, how can Wales counter that? And they, they've shown it a little bit when they go wider. That's where I think the space is for Wales. But for what England are doing, keep doing what they're doing. You know, keep kicking into space, keep putting Wales back in their own half, ask them to come out under pressure, which their line-out isn't functioning, and they're getting some reward from that. Jerry? I've loved it. I've loved the intensity. It's a massive game of chess. So both defences have been huge. From here, we've got a lovely view, and you can see the space on the edge, but it's almost like they're suckering each other in, particularly Wells, trying to draw England in to get them narrow, then to go wide, but we haven't quite seen the wide, and England are persisting with that kicking game, trying to turn the wingers, trying to put uh, Liam Williams under pressure. Some of the kicks haven't been spot on, but yeah, it's I think it's gone pretty much how we thought, other than maybe Wales have just slightly changed more than we thought. I think when, when the game loses its structure and it's toing and throwing, it, it's very open. England have come back into that a little bit. I thought Wales had the advantage in that game early on. But later on, I think England have had a lot of composure, getting out from about three minutes before half-time. They got out from defence very well and went up to the end and maybe could have scored then. So it's, it's a fascinating game. I think when the game loses its structure, that's probably Wales will, will enjoy that more. One solitary score. How did Curry find himself in that situation? And what actually led to that in the first place? Well, Wales' line-out has creaked a little bit all the way through, and we'll talk about that later. But the, the thing is, in a mall, a guy like Courtney Law is a big, strong guy, and he's got the longest arms I've ever seen. So he gets his hands on the ball, and, and, and that stuff is gold, because that's a turnover. Yeah, and it all comes, just keep your eye on Justin Tibrick. He nails Ben Young, but he does like any good seven. He's trying to pin Ben Young so he can't get to the next break on a place to come off. But in fairness to Tom Curry, he's completely aware of this situation, and he's through the gaps. So it's all about Tiprick has just stayed on Ben Young for that split second, hasn't got back on the defensive line. You can see Ross Moriarty's wider because he thinks Tiprick's going to get it back on his feet and stand in the guard. And that guy, Tom Curry, he's had a sensational first 40 minutes. What we see from England is uh, they're looking efficient. Because they're kicking so much, they're not doing very much work to get this territory. A lot of teams are going through phases and really losing, uh, using a lot of energy, whereas England just kicking, chasing pressure, looking for errors and mistakes. Curry has been immense. I've got to say, I, I know me and Martin are both number sevens in the past, but Tom Curry has been absolutely magnificent for England. Just his ball carrying, his tackling, his cleaning out rucks, his try, that was a really clever try. He's just been absolutely everywhere and he's really epitomised England performance. 17 tackles already, I mean, that's almost unheard of in a half of international rugby, but Tom Curry has been absolutely magnificent for England so far. What do we make generally about, about the way Wales are approaching the game? They're very narrow, aren't they? Yeah, we saw from the first attack in line out, you know, they hit up in the middle midfield with Hadley Parks. I, I thought they'd try and put a bit with, but just keep your eye on all the forwards. It's obviously a pre planned move that, look, we're going to pick and go, and we're going to almost try and play England at their own game. And it's, I'm not sure what rewards you're going to get from that if you're Wales, whether it's just a softening up process in the second half of seeing them go wide. But it was really interesting for the first attack and opportunity. Yeah, I thought the same. You know, you pick Corey Hill over the likes of Jake Ball and Adam Beer because he's a bit more mobile. You pick Rob Evans over Nicky Smith because he's a bit more mobile. So looking at the team selection, you think, oh, Wales are going to try and get outside of this initial English rush defence. But they're going twice they've been in the 22 and twice they've gone to this pick and go game, which is quite surprising. Like Martin said, this might be part of the plan to open up the second half, but we'll have to wait and see. I, it's not conducive to quick ball, though. It's almost like they're lulling them into a set, full sense of security, England, getting them there and then pinging the ball. But unless you quick, get quick ball, you're not going to make any use of it. But you talk about a softening up process. England's defence is immense. And, and the, their line speed, Martin, you know, you've been talking about this for the last three matches. Yeah, but Wales have made it easy for them. Just, if they're hitting one out runners who are static, then they get, they're getting blitzed and they're getting smashed by England. That, that was the turnover. That once they, if they make a little pass, I mean, that, that's good. It's a decent run. It's a, it's a pretty neutral situation. But they're making an extra pass. I think it gets them in the game. Um, and for England, that's a, that's a great one. There's a Welsh captain. Um, to, to knock him back to a big morale boost. I think Wales just need to be, it's easy to see from up view because of the intensity of the game, just a little bit braver on the ball and just shift it, get it a little bit wider because there have been opportunities where we are, definitely spaces are wide, but they've just tucked it a little bit and gone into contact. Whether we're going to see that in the second half because Martin mentioned the areas of possible England weakness when uh, Jamie George yeah. has been out on the wing, uh, Sinclair has been out on the wing and yet they haven't capitalised on that and, and it's happening. The line-out, especially the Welsh line-out, are England winning these line-outs? Are they disrupting, are they being perceptive, or are Wales making mistakes? Yeah, the, the glaring stat on set-piece of this tournament was Wales are about 65% on their own line-out, while everyone else is up in the 90s. So you know that as a team, and you, you, you try and get them under pressure. 
Um, this, this was a key one. Um, Wales got done for delaying the put-in because England have got them under pressure and, and Wales are second-guessing. They've, they've come back in and they started throwing a little bit longer and winning some more. But this stuff kills you. You know, it's a, it's a good win and they've knocked the ball on. That, that stuff's really stopping Wales. Before the match began, we spoke so much about England's kicking game. So what's the verdict on the first 40 minutes today? Well, they've, they've done as much as we expected. I think there's 16 kicks to England, 11 to Wales. And the difference in some of the kicks today from England is that some of the, 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 the competitive the, uh, balls that go up in the air that you can compete for, the banks, the, the, the little nudge was going England's way. And the first couple were going to Wales. Now, whether that's positioning or, or, or luck, back to the ball, it, it's a bit of both of those things. But they have been going for, for England. And on these two, we just see Johnny Mays up there, great position. Or is it Elliot? Johnny, I think. And um, I would have expected him to maybe catch that. But if not, the deflection with the England players coming in behind should have gathered it. But it's just so happens that the bounce has gone there to Wales. But now, so we've seen the kick again. It's competitive, they're up, they're challenging. They get the, the luck of the bounce, and then Youngs is there, seeing, seeing the space, and away they go, lots of pressure. They've kicked quite short, and I think they're trying to bring the Wales back, back guys up, and then kick again. That, that was effective, because the I, I think come if, up, if, if, it's gone, but if it's gone short, I think it's gone by accident. I don't think they're purposely doing that, from my view. Like Jerry said at the top of the show, England are kicking well, but if you like, look at the next kick they make, they always have three guys who are just absolutely gun-ho chasing after every single time, and they're just making it so much more effective. So then when Liam Williams, who's more often than not a fullback, is getting the ball, he's looking up, he's got three England boys, his team come out there, he's legging at him. So they've got to keep up their good kick chase, and that pressure that they constantly keep pinning Wales back is making Wales very hard to get out of their own. We're heart. seeing more play from Wales, aren't we? I mean, even England are getting it 30 yards But is that, is that of necessity? It's the way they play. You know, we, you, you can't change the way you play suddenly. What, like England, my point was going to be, England are 25 yards out from the try line. They're still kicking it. It's like it's in their mind. They're, they're, what else can you do? I've not, is, is Manu Tuolangi in the game? But he has, is, has he had a single pass? I mean, genuinely, I'm not sure. Yeah, no, not they've, stopped, no. they've, they've done a good job on Van Apola. I think they've gone low, is it? It wasn't a penalty, it was the very first one against Tipperick, but I think they've defended that physicality well, Wills. They've just, at the minute, I think they've just been a little bit smarter, England. Talking about giving penalties away, there have been a couple of penal uh, players have been penalised for no arms tackles, which I know is something that uh, gets your goat a bit, Martin. Well, there was a no arm, but for me, this isn't, this isn't one of those. That's, a, that's, a, that's The referees are under pressure to give these sort of penalties, and I disagree with that. that that's a fine tackle. I didn't think... You know, Garcia, I don't think he really even made contact. He's, that probably, he's a little I think bit that is down. a penalty. Yes, and, and, <laughs> looking from there, the, the I think you're right. one, they would have worked all week. If yeah. Billy Van Apolo is coming at you 100 miles an hour, go low. And that's what Justin Tipperick's done. He's trying to get his arm We, we don't have to, to sit on the fence here. Sinclair was a penalty. Yeah, yeah, I think bang right. Second time penalty. Round, and, and, and Tipperick's wasn't. No, you know, the no, the TMO got that wrong because it, it wasn't Yako who's called that. That's come from TMO. Which, is, which was wrong. Before the game began, we were talking about the need for calm heads and people being cool and all that sort of stuff. So I'm sure there'll be no ranting and raving in the dressing rooms at the moment. There'll be a calm approach about how do we, in England's case, maintain this lead, and in a Welsh case, how do we reduce the deficit and then go on and win the game? So what, what's Warren Gatlin going to be saying at this moment? I, I saw a piece of play from Wales five minutes for the end of the first half where we were, looked like we were coming from a touchline and Adam Wynne Jones just going to carry off nine really hard at Timmy's defence and instead he offloaded it back to Gareth Anscombe and we went to go wide. Wales have got to do that, they've got to stop carrying into this heavy English traffic which is within 50 metres of the ruck from, from either side of the ruck, they just got to get the ball out wider so in attack they've got to get a bit deeper and they just got to trust that the ball's just going to get to the edge, they've got to beat this five six man England rush defence that they've got. I think for England, they want the game with structure. That works for them. Wales agree, want to play a little bit wider. For England, the next points are vital. Whoever scores the next points, Wales are back in the game or England are getting away. England need to work incredibly hard and defensively. The longer this game goes, if Wales want to play wide. Really interested in the benches. We were speaking off here with Martin that, you know, it's a pretty inexperienced English be England bench. And, you know, it's been a really intense game for the last 25 minutes. Both benches, you know, Wales got Dan Bigger, They've got some experience, Nicky Smith, Elliot D, so they've got some impact with it as an inexperienced English bench. The changes I see is England being a bit more calm in the, in the Welsh 22 and Wales playing a bit wider. Those are the differences I see in the second half.
No green shirts here, mercifully. <laughs> so talking about the benches, though, if we actually look at the individuals here, I mean, the whole thing about Anscombe and Bigger before the game began, at what stage, if this, if this score kind of stays the same for the next 10 minutes or so, at what stage does Dan Bigger come on to change the nature of the match? Well, he went early, didn't he, in Paris, uh, when Wales were coming back into the game, he made that change. And if you look at Wales over those first two games, the bench have had a big impact and they finished the game really well. So. It'll be very interesting when he goes for bigger, but I don't think it'll be that too long into the second half. And, and if we look at the England bench, Martin, who sort of leaps out at you here as if the match is sort of balanced on a knife edge who might come in and change things? Well, it's relatively inexperienced and relatively young, but Ellis Genge, the, the reserve loose head prop, is a dynamic player. More than, than Ben Moon, who's playing, has done a very solid job, by the way, in the first half. But if he gets a chance, if this game loses its structure in the last 20 minutes like it did two years ago, he could have a real opportunity to, to, to do something special. Sam, I've been interested in your body language up here watching this match. I'm sure part of you is thinking, I wish I was playing. But, part, but have you been a little bit disappointed about Wales's overall performance? I'm just a little bit confused at the minute because it goes against the team selection that they went with. So they, they picked the team which I thought was going to play the rugby that they played in the autumn. So this happened in South Africa. They picked the team which was a bit more expansive in their starting in South Africa. And they went wider and they played more expansive. But we haven't seen that yet. So that's why I'm a little bit confused with the selection so far. I uh, would agree. And, and, and I think England are on a real mission with their strategy and tactic not to move away from it. They're, they're kicking. Some people might thinking a little bit too much, but territories is what the game's all about. And if you can be accurate in your execution in that final quarter, you will score points, whether it's a try or whether it's a penalty. England will look to strangle them, won't they? Keep, keep the territory game going and then just take those opportunities. If England score next, particularly if it's a five, it's a long way back. Martin? Yeah, I think that could be a crucial moment just before half-time. It's a great opportunity for England to go two scores ahead, let Wales off the hook, and the next score is absolutely crucial. 40 minutes to go then of Wales against England. England narrowly ahead. Back to Eddie. The starting 30 are still out there. No changes at half time. Gareth Anscombe gets us underway. Wales trailing by three points to ten. Elliot Bailey with the catch for England. Ben Youngs. Billy Woody Polar. Ben Youngs with back to the aerial game. Pretty soon into the second half. Liam Williams catches well. Alan Wynne Jones claiming he was taken out. Corey Hill tackled by Kyle Sinclair, who made a massive number of tackles in the first half. Oh, Wales has spilt it already. Ben Youngs, long. Josh Adams oh, went for the interception, it was an advantage. Henry Slade comes away with it, will go back to the knock-on yeah, scrimmage advantage. I tend to agree with, uh, with Martin, they've got to be a little bit braver. And they've got to get outside, that, as we said first half, the first four-man blitz for England, they're so quick and they're up there quickly and they're looking for contact. You've just got to try and get the extra pass to get outside of that blitz. They will check it, you have to trust me. I've already been cleared, it's no foul play. Thank you. You have to trust us. Well, that situation could have been interesting well, then, if go. Henry Slade had chosen to kick earlier. For another foot race with Johnny May. Wales choosing to stand an extra man on the blind side here. England lining two up straight behind the scrum coach. There you are. It's a big blind side, but the two players could switch Prince. either way. Elliot Daly standing Five. behind Owen Farrell. Set. Ben Young's. Jonathan Davis has that sort of right-hand side, or his left-hand side, covered. Billy Vony Pollock goes the other way, and it oh, oh, a little gap open up for Billy. Here is Henry Slade with the speed to the outside him, and Hadley Parks makes a good tackle. Curry. Play 10. What a first half he had. Sinclair. No hands for it. Manu Tuolangi. A rare carry. Yeah, very rare. For the Leicester centre. Billy Vunipola. Even Billy hasn't carried the ball that much. You know. <laughs> Rough. He is always a threat. Ben Moon, a rare carry for the loose head. Ball's available. 
Well, Debbie with the kick, gave it to George Cruz, Tom Francis over the ball, but it's there for England. Farrell again, Daly on the switch, Navidi with the wraparound tackle. Farrell kicks, charge down, England line out. Are they surprising, uh, you know, it's... They don't go through many phases, England, do they? They look to kick all the time, you know, they just think, right, OK, we're not getting anywhere, let's turn them. And as Jerry said in the industry, just if it's a mindset, where, no matter where they are on the field, if it's slow ball, you turn, put the pressure on the opposition. Jamie George throws, George Cruz gets hands to it. England have to go backwards a little bit, but then Jack Knoll brings them very much Forwards. Hands away. There for Ben Yance. Vunipola. Off at night. Switch by Owen Farrell. To Jack Knoll. To Elliot Daly. George Ross with a tackle. In touch. Flag up. <laughs> Look dangerous. Yeah. They look very dangerous, England. Just saw for the first time yeah, England the varying the contact point, which they've done much better in the previous games. It's making it difficult for Wales to get more than one tackler in. <laughs> Jérôme Garcès, the assistant referee, puts his flag up, and Gareth Davis, very much the assistant assistant. Yeah, you see, you know, Jack Noel always around the forwards, always picking off the tired forwards. Brilliant break. Justin Tipperick. Good catch. Leave the leg. Mark Wilson. Let's go. Warned Out. off picking up any legs. It's inside. Gareth Davis. To Jack Knoll. Daly. Jonathan Davis to Tuilangi. Or rather, Jonathan Davis with the tackle, the pass to Tuilangi. Farrell, the kick again. Right on. And Johnny May can only watch it go into touch. Well, that does again, it puts pressure on Wales. They're still deep in the 22. Have to try and get an exit. And of course, first they've got to get the line out right. Yeah. All right. Nothing on once again, Brian. They turn up, as you said, the pressure's now on the line out. Right. It's creaking, they know it. And they're trying to, and they're, they are finding it difficult, you know, to get the exit strategy and the good kicking game in. And a little bit of a stranglehold now with England early in the second half. Look at tackles made. England have made more than 20 more tackles than Wales. Open up. So they're quite happy to give possession Open away, up. provided it makes the opposition stay in their own territory. Closer. Closer. Gareth Davis, the scrum half is at the front of the lineup. Josh Navidi in the scrum half position. Corey Hill can't get it. Jamie George, the England hooker, has it. Another line out goes. Penalty. Oh, penalty. England take an arm out. It does lead to frustration. Well, there's a penalty Five. there, but if you watch yeah, the lead, lead, rate at which the Welsh jumpers actually get up on off the up. ground, the slow. But also, you know, you look, they're yeah. always unsure of what's happening because England are in Just there. The you know, they're, they're messing with their heads at the moment because you know they're taking the time, the line out is getting slow, they're not sure, and then they've got away with a penalty there because of uh, there was an Sorry. arm on the jumper. Gareth Anscombe takes play nearly up to halfway. Take the gap now. I was playing the arm. Yeah. Yep. Clear tap. Just a little tough. Just watch it. Who's his right hand? Can't get there. Well, I'll tell you what. You've got more chance of getting away with yes. it with a tap. Yes. Rather than claiming all over him. Yeah. Corey Hill down to Gareth Davis. Hadley Parks spins away from Owen Farrell. Front foot ball for Wales now. And they kick two. George North chasing. George North catching now in a tussle with Jack Knoll. It's going to be whose ball? Jérôme Garcès to decide Wales' ball. Manu Tuilani and Liam Williams. 
there won't be one punch thrown, not one thrown. Both captains. I think it's, uh, if you laugh, do you think it, it, you're trying to pretend it's not serious? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it is. It's not, no one's going to throw a punch, so you're spending eight weeks please. on... Uh, on the side, aren't you? So uh, I'm not sure the referee needs this. Just get on with the game. Yes, Come here, please. I'm saying, get on with it. Because okay. they're going to tell the captains a calm down. I'm not going to force anything. Now. So I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do the next time. Whoever starts it will be penalised. Yeah, yeah. Comfortable with that? Starts what? Stop. Stop laughing at each other. We have to find who starts the next one. Here we go. <laughs> oh. Oh. The gap. Shakes him warmly by the throat. <laughs> Got a finger pointing and grabbing. Let's get on with it. Right. They've all had a little pause. Yeah, no and gap. And don't have to throw into the line out because they've got a free kick. See, that's the sort of thing that England right on need to gap. avoid. Don't need. They've been giving problems in the lineup anyway. So Wales have a free kick and opt for the scrummage. Gareth Anscombe calls via the back of his hand. Liam Williams passes on the message. Josh Adams comes very wide towards this touchline. Jo Josh Adams wearing 11, tight against this right-hand touchline. Johnny May, interestingly, hasn't come with him. Yep, both backs down. Well, the intensity's dropped a little bit, hasn't it? You know, you have to throw this first half again. With a little knock-ons and penalty decisions, it's just... There's been no the continuity in the, in the second half so far. Three-hour scrums. Do my best. Seconds! Shoulders up, both hookers. Grouch! Boyne! Set! Eight to squeeze! It's gone down again. Referee will reset. This is this is where it starts to get frustrating. Both of you immediately on the ground. Let's do it again. Well, rugby should bring in a rule, a law rather, that packs have to bind up within a certain time. Both down at the same time. And get into line outs within a certain time and not have committee meetings. No two players will know each other better. There's Warren Gatton, the Welsh coach. <laughs> he knows a bit about scrummaging, but it is interesting. You've got Ben Moon on the England loose head with Tom Curry pushing on his side against Tom Francis. Exeter props. Set into squeeze. Little squeeze by England. Gareth Davis went in for it quickly. Hadley Parks. He's sort of up to the advantage line, a bit scrappily, but it's there for Short Josh Adams. Win. Davis to Ken Owens. Kyle Sinclair makes yet another tackle. Good tackle there as well, ball and all tackle. Josh Davidi, and again, we're back to sort of one red shirt into two whites. Corey Hill, two, and it, it's Courtney Laws and Manu Tuolangi. Gareth Panscombe. Josh Adams against Johnny May. May outside is 22. Jonathan Davis with the tackle. Penalty to Wales. Hanging on. So Wales got something out of it. <laughs> I don't think it was the, how they planned it. No, I don't. 15 on his feet. I think you've got to go for goal here. Yep. Gareth Hanscom, yes, little you go. Uh, show at the post. You have to say, of all the ball the Wales have had, they haven't really threatened the English try line yet. So, you know, if it's there, the three points are there, you take them, you claw your way back into the game. It's a big count against England. Yep.
And normally a penalty count like that would be reflected in either the score or the possession and territory. Not far behind Gareth Hanscom, the ever-present Neil Jenkins. But this is the person right here and now to score the opening points of the second half. Pulls it in. Wales double their score. They're up to six. England still lead. They're on ten. Well, this game was always going to be tight. But just remind everybody that that penalty kick, it actually started with England giving a free kick away at the line out. Owen Farrell deep towards the touchline, towards Ross Moriarty. Jack Noel with the tackle. Play the ball, play the ball. Last feet. It's still inside. It's inside. Still a process to be managed here. Gareth Davis. The kick and the chase. Elliot Daly, plenty of time. Billy Vunipola inside him. Navidi and Anscombe with the tackle. Release! Farrell, different type of kick, very high, beautifully taken by Liam Williams. Jonathan Davis there protecting the ball, there for Gareth Davis. Spot. Owens again. George Cruz, not offside. Good timing of the tackle by the England second row. Chase. Chase Rob Evans on. goes back in. Jonathan Davis, Josh Adams, Chase, Elliot Daly catches safely, tackled by Davis. That chase isn't hard enough. Jimmy George. Tipperick and Navidi hold up the England hooker, but only for so long. Ben Young's the kick. Again, oh, great catch by Liam Williams. <laughs> and then he was hit by Manu Tuolangi. Moriarty. Offside. We have an offside well, penalty, offside. England up a little bit too quickly well, that time. Next. Still advantage being played, Anscombe. Oh. Well, oh, Anscombe, was he taken late? No, 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 no. Kyle Sinclair, oh. the... He just held his line. Oh. I was going to say guilty party, line. but uh, oh, yeah. I don't think Yakro Paper is he's particularly interested in... He just, he just held his ground, please. He's the same man every time. Yes. Let's have a look at it. He leans into him. Yep. I think he does, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. Just watch. Yeah. He changes he the line. line. Yeah. He stands still. Simon, he held his line. Let's play. I, you know, it's, there was a penalty given anyway. There was nothing there else needed. You no, know, he can't look okay, for. So you, is it more than a penalty? Oh no, no. That's good refereeing. This it's a penalty, anyway. but it's nothing I more. This All part of the yes, drama. I get yes. This. Good kick, Gareth Anscombe. And you can just sense by the mood of the crowd. Maybe for Wales. Maybe. That's a great effort by Sinclair. That's a great effort. 20 tackles. Does that count as 21? No, I went slightly late. Justin Tipperick against yes, George Cruz. Cruz. And George Cruz <laughs> deliberately no near straight. kept his arms well away from him. Gareth Davis. Play it. Rob Evans receives and ships on to Corey Hill. At which point do the Wales give it width? Not yet. Captain Alan Jones trying to get the ground. Advantage of England holding it up. Is it a high tackle? It's a shot. This high tackle. Oh, oh, no. That's a very no. strange kick. 
They'll go back for the penalty. It will, but you've got a free play, Ed. You know, this, that's where you have to have composure. You have a free play penalty in front of the posts. Sinclair's going to be on a it's final the penalty only infringement. He's got him around the neck, so the arm around the neck. It's nothing more, but it's the same player. So this player has to take the warning now. Oof. Thank you. So Kyle Sinclair, he, he was so good in the first half. And he's just got a little ragged in the second yeah, half. Yeah. Given away a couple of penalties, been involved in an incident, and any yeah, the chokehold on him. And look at the captain now. Yeah. He said <laughs> I think he's going off. I think he'll be substituted. No, just watch. I can see it. Somebody warming up. I, I'm he's lost his cool a little bit. He might be going off soon. No movement yet. Oh, actually, there is. Yes. Harry Williams of Exeter. <laughs> Another Exeter prop comes on, will come on. Well, Eddie, as you said, the balance of this game is slowly tilting towards Wales. They still won't lead if this goes over. It does. Wales are up to nine, just one point adrift. And the change is made. Harry Williams comes on. Carl Sinclair goes off. And he takes that, that huge tackle count with him. It's very high again. And Ross Moriarty hasn't got much time. But he does take it outside the 22. Alan Jones again. Inside. Elliot Daly will be on the receiving end of this kick from Gareth Davis, presumably. He is changed from England. Well, not so much because Billy Rooney Polar up Good. to halfway and over it. Farrell again for Johnny May. That one is out by quite a distance, I, and the captain immediately holds up his hand. I don't really understand England's tactic at the moment. They haven't had much possession in the second half. They're not going through the phases. And that's a kick, you know, very poor kick. I think they're just trying to play in the right positions all the time. But they're not offering anything in attack at the moment, so... You're right, the big difference between this performance and the previous two is that England carried the ball into contact in a variety of ways. They've stopped even trying to do that at the moment. Corey Hill, and again the lineup goes wrong. Harry Williams, new on, picks up the scraps. Ben Youngs towards Josh Adams. Vonage is over. Well taken oh. by Adams. If you want to talk about blocking, you can look at Moriarty there. He definitely changed his line. Rob Evans against the new prop, Harry Williams. So Harry Williams straight into the action. And we're going upstairs again. Josh Adams and Johnny May catches. Good catch by the Leicester wing. Farrell to Tuilani. Takes on Hadley Parks on the outside. Tuilani through two tackles. The third brings him down, but the first glimpse of the thread of Manu Tuilani. George Cruz hard on the shoulder. No. England. They have. Not attack much in the second half, but they're up to the Welsh 22. To Elangi again. Alan Jones, the tackler. Harry Williams. Rooney Polar. Navidi tracked him. Ben Youngs hesitating, pausing. Owen Farrell offers him that option. Hold it! <laughs> and does well to deliver the ball. Williams again. Isolated, no, he's in. Get in there quickly. Henry Slade, or Billy, makes himself available. 
England. Pace at me building. Courtney Lords. With the delayed pass, Gareth Davis. Dustin Tippett to Josh Adams. It's gone loose again. Henry Slade bouncing everywhere. Pinball rugby. Referee calms it down. Back for a scrummage. Well, you remember the tackle from 11 on their jumper? This is exactly the same for me. That's too close to call. Well, although it ended with an error, that is a better passage of play from England. Yes. Yep. I tell you what, there's some tired bodies out there now. I can watch Jamie George, two Lagis run, one on one, Hadley Parks, backs himself, gets on the outside. Unfortunately for, for two Lagis, there's no support. Now he's on the inside. How are we? But again, right. both sets of defences have been absolutely brilliant. And lovely, you've got plenty of time on the ball, Farrell. Clear out is good. Okay. Ken Owens is the injured but, party. But the game, if there's a loose kick or a chance for a counter attack, there's some fours out there really, really blowing now. It's been a ferocious game with big hits. And you get, you know, if you get isolated in midfield, someone's got to spot him. Top of the picture there. Yep. Not those two. Yes, planted in their seats. But uh, two props are going off for Wales. Rob Evans and Tom Francis. Dylan Lewis comes on. Nicky Smith comes on. This is going to all the hallmarks of a game that's going to be decided by an individual mistake or one piece of individual inspiration. Hit and settle. the same as yours, I'll try my best. Ten red. Ten. And Wales are making a change at outside half. Off goes Gareth Anscombe. And on comes Dan Bigger. That seems quite popular to me. But it was a different sound from, uh, <laughs> from what, what uh, escorted Carl Sinclair off the field. Yeah, this is, you know, very similar to France. Wales bring Dan Bigger on because the game is very tight. He's a better kicker than Anscombe. He's good in the end of the high ball as well. So it's it's going to be close, and this is the man who can finish a job off. Good, solid, well scrum. Parks going straight at Owen Farrell. Ben Youngs. Tom Curry once again. Over the ball, Tom Curry. Penalty to England. Can you see the limitations of Hadley Parks yeah, taking the ball up there, but he's been skinned twice. He couldn't get it, then he dropped. I don't know the difference is, if you watch England going into contact, they turn their bodies and the placement is very, very good. And it's very difficult to get a jackal and to steal the ball. Whereas Hadley Parks fell there and just watch, here he comes, he comes in and you watch him coming in from the left hand side. There he is, good base on his feet. Hands over, he's penalty linear, England. He's linear there, isn't he? Five. And what can you say about Tom Curry? Only five, 20. Five. Number five after the kick. Five. He heals quickly too because only two weeks ago I, he had that gash on his forehead. A mere flesh wound. Great enough for Owen Farrell. England's, England's lead extended. 13 points to nine. And England actually needed that to rebalance what has not been a good half for them so far. Well done. George Cruz. 
his day is done. He's, a, he's been very influential. I need to suck the, the, the worst line out. No, he's out. Gareth Davis ordered back. Elliot Daly catches. Tackle by Nicky Smith. No hand. Joe Launchbury is on, not far from Ben Young's, on Billy oh, Vuitton's shoulder. England continue with their kicking game. Dan Bigger to Liam Williams. Oh, Williams to Alan Jones, straight to Jack Noll. Release. England suddenly back in possession. That's got Wales with possession now. Gareth yes. Davis keeps it in the hand. Ken Owens, Hudley Parks, Josh Adams cuts inside. Manu Tuilani back with an important tackle. <laughs> there though for Gareth Davis, Johnny May is down. This is Ross Moriarty, tackled by Joe Launchbury. Wales up to the 22, Johnny May still down. He's Josh Navidi. he got to come right now, Johnny May. Back on his feet, but not doing what Johnny May does so effectively, running fast. He's looking shaken, Johnny May. Ross Moriarty heads back towards traffic. Corey Hill. Ken Owens, it's still the single runners for Wales, but they have possession. The new props involved, both of them. Nicky Smith that time. Wales edging their way forward. Forwards in a tighter cluster now. Release 18! Ken Owens. A change, it's down bigger. Alan Jones, one hand goes in. The captain turns, rolls, delivers. Wales prepared to keep it tight. George North in there. Nicky Smith acting scrum half. Dylan Lewis first there. Gareth Davis picks up. Corey Hill. Ross Moriarty to within three metres. Tipperick. On the left. If they go left, they have a chance. Alan Wynne Jones doesn't risk the pass this time. He gave an interception last time. Still there. Adams. Oh, they missed a glorious chance there. It's still there for Wales. Patience. They have to build slowly, patiently again. George North comes off his wing. Well, you could throw a blanket over Wales now, they're very, very narrow, there's no option to go wide. They've set their stall out what they want to do. Mickey Smith drives on. Davis. Jonathan oh, Davis out in the back, but Tom Curry is there waiting for him. Courtney Law's there. George North again. Just now the change of play. Josh Adams. Liam Williams very much on his own. Does well, the fullback. Therefore, Gareth Davis. Still advantage. Penalty. Still the penalty advantage coming. Bigger, long to George North. Elliot Daly, Hadley Parks inside him. George North goes on his own. And it was a brilliant tackle by Manu Tuolangi. Again, Corey Hill is there. The second row scores his third try, and Wales take the lead. Well, there's a reward for Wales' patience. I thought they lost the chance when they failed to stop any to miss an egregious over up on the left, but one piece by George North. What an angle by a second row. He comes late. This is the end of it. He stretches. Great finish by the second row, but just watch the angle he comes on.
Dan Bigger there, he comes against the green. That's a great finish. It was also a beautifully weighted pass by Dan Bigger. Yeah, all he needs to touch the line. For the first time in the match, Wales take the lead. Well, the momentum was swinging their way, and part of that is a better performance by Wales in terms of fewer errors. It's also as a result of England stopping playing. Dan Bigger for the extras. Yes. Oh, he delivered the pass, and now he's delivered the conversion. Wales 16, England 13, and changes off the England bench. Joe Fokarasinga comes on, the bath winger. Johnny May, who did look groggy, has gone. He is a very, very dangerous player. He is a big, big man, very quick. Ross Moriarty, as always, waits, gathers the restart. Oof. Harry Williams with the follow-up tackle. Again, Elliot Daly waits. Jack Noel is now dropping back, charge now. Dan Bigger sorts it out Beautiful for Wales. Kick. What a brilliant kick by Dan Bigger. Improvisation and gets Wales out of trouble. That is, you know, he's been close to this a couple of times, there's no pillar there protecting the scrum half, but cool head, desperate times, you know, needed, he's just slammed it in easy. Well, yes, he got the lucky bounce, but what did he make of it? Only 60 metres. And England are going to be tested now because they're not Managed the second half well at all. Adam Beard, who hasn't lost in a That's Welsh that. shirt, is coming on. <laughs> nice. I, know, I know superstition doesn't count for much on such a day, but uh, it's Corey Hill, the try scorer, this is who's not, going off. This is a game now where it's important where you play this game. What areas of the pitch, you know, it's tired legs, there's not many can go the length, so refereeing decisions can go with or against you. England will want to be camped in the West 22 now, put pressure on. They have to keep possession now, they can't kick on the first play. So what do England do? They find themselves behind. More. Their kicking game has been their only real strategy in this game. Ben Young's happy to keep it going for the moment. Time it's George North who makes the catch. <clears throat> Gareth Davis. If he kicks, it'll be towards Billy Vooney Pollard. That, that hasn't gone far at all. Wales in danger of giving away that 10 metre penalty. Went backwards. Now there is space. Oh. Yeah, knock on. Little knock on by nice England. Wales get the put in. Yeah. Yep. The quality of the kicking now, you know, they, they could see it. There's some tired kicks going over there. The height isn't there for hand time for players that get underneath it. I think you've got to put oh, it through the hands a little bit now. Uh, Mark, Mark Wilson, that's a rare mistake he's had. He has been outstanding for England in this Six Nations. There's that wonderful atmosphere now because it's Wales are in the lead, but there's still worry in the air, concern around the ground because the job is not done. Just Ball at the back under eight minutes to go. Take it out. Gareth Davis has to play it. That's good referee. Take Dan it. Dan Bigger. Hold your hold. Heads for the high place. Oh, Jack Noel again. That's a good catch. But he's being held up. Rock, no. <laughs> he out. gets down the ground and. Don't move it, take the ball out. The Don't captain has to move. Alan Wynn, get out of there. Oh, Courtney Laws. Oh, 
England. Start to go wide. Henry Slade, he hasn't seen much of the ball all game. And England with a player down. I think it's Courtney Laws who's down Release! on the ground oh, for England. Release! It doesn't look good either. No, it doesn't. He's staying down. England kick on. Good catch. Wales safely back in possession. Dylan Lewis. Again, big hits again. Good carry by him. Harry Rock. Williams was the good tackler. Courtney Laws is sitting up. This is Liam Williams. There's the ball. It's there for Fifth Wales. Nicky Smith ducks out of Tom. Mark Wilson's challenge. I'm not sure if Wales are aware that they are a man up at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> They've gone aerial too. Hadley Parks chases and comes. No, it's not. Dan Bigger, the great kick chaser, no more. has turned Ross. this into an opportunity Shots. for Wales. Ross Moriarty. Short side, I think, Ross is in. on. Launchbury is there. There's a 4 2 down there and one forward. They yeah. go battering on Wales through Ken Owens. Now it's been filled now. Dan Bigger to Jonathan Davis. Gareth Davis waits. Keeps going that way. Ross Mar Moriarty. Dylan Lewis risks the pass. Well taken, Adam Beard. Those long levers come out. Still in possession, Dan Bigger. Happy for this to go on. Up goes the ball. Elliot Daly underneath. Too he can far. mark this. Yeah. Too far. You know, right decision, but too far. But you have to applaud England's defensive uh, defensive line there. So solid and kept them organised line. Courtney Laws goes off. That doesn't Over look too line. good either. Elliot Daly sweeps it downfield, keeps it on the field. Liam Williams indicates to Dan Digger he's going high and catches and then rolls away from the touchline and the beard in support Wales through Bigger Bigger on his own no more there for Gareth Davis Hadley Parks to captain Alan Wynne Jones to Tipperick Jonathan Davis Josh Adams off his win Adams he doesn't risk the pass the pick up and go by Moriarty. Lever. George North goes in digging. England sends a turnover. George North might have done enough there. Wales just get the put in. How close is that? Up to six, 76 minutes on the clock. This is where you want to be. This is where you want to be. England want to be in the Wales 22. Keep possession. And that's all they got to do. The clock is their friend. No. If England lose this game, they will look back at this half and they will rue not actually trying to play. They carried the ball really well in the first two games. They posed no threat to the immediate defence of Wales in second half at all. I think they've um, overemphasized their kicking game. You know, they've, they've kicked well in the first two games, but the back three have done well and they haven't dominated the aerial game. So they had to look for. You know, for plan B, and unfortunately at the moment, that's why they find themselves behind. Well, it's not over yet by any means. The changes are still being made. Number 17 for England there, with the beard. Ellis Genge comes on. Brad Shields is on. Alan Davis, Wales' new scrum half, is on. But Jonathan Ken Wonder Owens <laughs> trying to get a reaction out of a crowd that's already at frenzy point. One of the differences for England's kicking game when they kick early is in the first two games they'd actually made ground through the hands, then they use that. In the second half, they've made no ground first. Wales have a put in at the scrimmage. Inside the England 22, the clock is running again. Three and a half minutes to go. 
movement. There's movement there's in the scrum, says referee Yako Paper. Yeah, we're not going to waste time. Let's get back in. He's got to wait for it. There's a bit of weight going across. Let's go. Steady. I think they're doing their best to look calm. Warren Gatland, Sean Edwards, they will not be calm. I think Sean Edwards had a smile then, I'm not sure. This is where the crowd can play its part. Hymns and Darius. Penalty advantage to Wales. They have a free kick. Josh Adams against Elliot. Get Josh Adams for the line. Oh, fantastic. Absolutely sensational. Well, again, a kick to nothing because the penalty was coming, but well executed. And the balance of play, no more than Wales deserve. England paying the price for lack of ambition. What an end to this game, and Sean Edwards. The expression breaks, Josh Adams. Look at this. What a kick this is. He knows it's a free play. Dan Bigger has made the difference, is coming on. He out jumps him, and what a finish. What the finish that is! Well, the running player will always get higher than a standing jump, but he has the wherewithal and the spatial awareness. He knows where the line is. Right, quickly, Jonathan, your Guinness Man of the Match. Well, Tom Curry has been amazing, hasn't he, in our first half? But I think the overall performance for me, the Guinness Man of the Match, is how he's caught with the England kicking game. It's Liam Williams, the back Concept. three have been brilliant, but he is my Guinness man of the match. And still it's not over, there's Dan Bigger's conversion to come. So he gave the pass for the first try for Corey Hill. He delivered the kick for Wales' second, and again he goes for the conversion, and he misses it. <laughs> Here we go, Brian. Well, look, and you, you saw Anscombe... Same tactic, not executing. Better kicker, right on the money. Well finished and no more than Wales deserve. A late change. Wales celebrates in slow mo. They'll be going mad in Hendy. Back on the field. Hadley Parks has gone off. Owen Watkin has come on. England have to score twice. They have 30 seconds to do it. Josh Adams, who can't stop counting the ball. Alec Davis arrives. The last few seconds to wind down. Elliot D, the Two new more hooker. Carries. Two more carries. That's all he Elliot is. Davis just needs one more carrier. It's the captain himself who says, I, as ever, am available. Dylan Lewis. We're into overtime. Elliot Davis. What a second half by Wales. They were down at half time, but they have had by far the better of the second half. And look what it means to Alan Wynn Jones. 12 wins, a record for them. 12 wins in a row. And it means they have beaten England, the oldest enemy. Wales remain on course. There's work to do, but they are now three out of three in the Six Nations. They have beaten England by 21 points to 13. So their Grand Slam hopes are still alive. England's are shattered because they did not understand what made their kicking, early kicking game successful. In the first two games, it was the work they did before yeah. that proprietary work, the ball carrying. They stopped doing that in the second half. The kicking game didn't work, and when it came to it, no alternative. What a test match, though. You know, ferocious defence, hardly anything in it. The kicking game is a vital part now, but, you know, it's just 
Amazing. England, I thought, kicked too much ball away. They didn't put him through the hits. What's the point of Marnie Tulagi being on the field and Elliot Daly? It was just... And then when the Wales had the opportunity, they got him into a stranglehold. Dan Bigger, when he came on, made a massive impact to us as well with his kicking game. And I think on the second half performance, you know, Wales deserved to win. Well, the players stopped at long last. Liam Williams, Guinness Man of the Match. Wales exhausted but delirious and victors by 21 points to 13. Liam Williams, live TV. Well, logic, there is absolutely no place for it in sport, is there? Well done to Warren Gatland, well done to Wales. They're singing hymns and arias, and if there's going to be a Grand Slam this year, it's going to be Wales's after that emphatic victory and not even a losing bonus point for England. We'll hear from the man of the match, Liam Williams, in just a moment or two. Uh, Sam, first thoughts at half-time, a little bit despondent, now elated. I got to say, I was completely wrong. Um, I said Wales have to play wide. I didn't think they could match England physically, and Wales stuck with the same game plan that they had in the first half, went at them physically, and that's how they got their try after 36 phases or whatever it was. I'll be honest, I didn't see that coming, so you know, great credit to Wales. They did very well physically second half. I think we can hear now from the man of the match. Don't beat them, and um, just glad to get a win. Where did that performance come from, given what had happened after France and Italy? Uh, well, we've always known that we are a great team and um, we didn't play well in the first two games. So, uh, you know, we've worked hard this week and the um, boys really dug deep. Maureen Gatlin said before this game he was a bit worried about the kicking threat from England. What does it mean to you to foil that today? Because you had a big influence in it. Yeah, uh, I think last week um, when they played France, they kicked quite a lot of ball. But um, as I said, we've been working hard this week in the back three and um, just happy to be defusing those bombs. Many congratulations to you, Liam. Thank you. Cheers. Well, there is the league table. Two thirds of the way through a third weekend of this year's Guinness Six Nations. And you can see that played three and one three with 12 points Wales. I suppose actually that missed bonus points against Italy when it came to the championship, depending on what happens over the next couple, uh, couple of rounds, may come into play, but for the moment it's played three and won three, and they have their eyes on a grand slam. Next round for them will be at Murrayfield against Scotland, and the championship for Wales finishes here against Ireland on the last weekend. What a match that could be, goodness me. What an occasion it could be, never mind the match. Martin, from an England perspective, how disappointing in the end was that? Yeah, they got what they deserved, ultimately. We had 20 minutes at the start of the second half where we gave free kick, England gave free kicks away and penalties. Non, not one incident cost them the game, but they lost a the grip of it. And then Wales really took hold of the game with that try, not just obviously the points and the lead, but from that moment, they imposed themselves on this game physically and there's only, there was only going to be one winner. I think what Jonathan said was right. England kicked away... They had a couple of good carries and kicked the ball away straight away. And Wales dealt with it, and, and England got what they deserved, really. Didn't play well enough at all. I don't think they, they kicked too much. I just think uh, they kicked poorly. Their, 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 their accuracy was nowhere near what it's been in the previous two games. And Wales stuck to their game plan religiously. They just kept on one out drive, one out drive. England, everybody thought England would be able to smash that back, but they couldn't. And they're... The technical ability of Wells to keep on hold of that ball, to go through all those phases, just so just shows how well they have worked. How much was that a victory for Warren Gatland over Eddie Jones? It's his first victory, isn't it, over Eddie Jones? It's a huge victory as well. It's a history-making win for Wales as well, 12 in a row. First Wells seemed to ever do that. And at half-time, I was pretty worried. I thought England seemed to have the upper hand. But Warren Gatland came up with a quote after the French game, didn't he? Wales have forgotten how to lose. And they just had so much confidence, they built on in the second half. That man there, Liams, Williams, is outstanding. Dan Bigger coming on to seal it uh, for the last 20. Warren Gatlin got everything right today. It's got to be said, defensively, Sean Edwards got everything right, Rob Howley. And it's just a fantastic, good performance from Wales. What is there to say? I mean, obviously, Owen Farrell was being laying down the law at that point. What is there that you can say in those situations, Martin? I think you're disappointed because you, you know you can play better than that. If you go out and play your absolute best and you get beaten, 
that, that's okay. But most of the time you come off, you think we, we could have done more than that. There was a period there for 20 minutes when England didn't do anything. You know, just concede free kicks and penalties, and the score went to one point. And you, they never got back from that. You've got to be bigger than that. You, you, you've got to take some... Everybody looks at Owen Farrell. Oh, and we're going to go to him now. Maybe he can tell us. Owen, why did England lose that test match? Why did England lose that test match, do you think? Uh, we just didn't really get a foothold in the last... Uh, probably 30 minutes of the game, if we're honest. Uh, Paul did well in the first half, came out, came out, had a good go at them in the, at the start of the second half and then couldn't seem to get back that momentum. There was a point at which there were some sort of extras down here and Carl Sinclair was substituted. Were England just losing their shape and their discipline? Uh, no, not, not discipline. It was, it was more a fact that we couldn't get our foothold back into the game. Uh, we made a few errors, um, myself included in that, and and they they did what they did well, and um, and we couldn't really get out of our half. We made a couple of mistakes, had a couple of calls against us, and they managed to build a lot of pressure, and um, we didn't manage to get out of it as quickly as we wanted to. What's the level of disappointment, Owen, given the tremendous start that England made to this championship? Oh, I, I think it'll feel a bit worse and feel a lot worse than it should now. But, Mainly because there's probably a big chunk of that, the last part of that game where we didn't, we wouldn't have felt like we fired a shot. But um, we'll look back at it and we'll take what we need to from it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Jerry, so many English fans were getting ahead of themselves perhaps a bit, talking after the games in against Ireland, against France, that this was 2003 all over again. How much of a setback is this match? I think it's big. Uh, you come here playing the way you are, you, you, you do expect to win. Wales are thinking the same thing, but Wales hadn't played anywhere near as well as England had in performance-wise. This is a huge step up for Wales. OK, they base their game a lot on defence, but just to be so narrow in attack is a totally different change. We talked about England's change in kicking more, being more strategic, being more territorial. Th this showed Wales have got more than just the wide game that they showed this time last year in the Six Nations, they've now gone really tight and say, right, we can we can match physicality with our strength. And mentally, that's massive for Wales, that victory. Did Wales do to England today what England did to Ireland three weeks ago? I, I think it was a little bit different. I, I think England would have been very happy with the way they played in the first half. But Owen's saying it, you know, they, they couldn't get a grip of the game in the second half because they never had the ball. When they did, they made a mistake and gave it back. I think we can hear from the Welsh captain. Is that one of your best days as Wales captain? Oh, I don't know. I'm, hopefully there's a few more ahead, but, um, you know, it's a nice day today. And we uh, make sure we realise what it is and uh, enjoy the next few hours, but then we're back on the horse tomorrow. You went through 34 phases before Corey Hill crashed over. You know, what does it say about this team that you had the patience and, and the time to do that and the, peace, the presence of mind? Um, as I suppose we, we, we spoke in the week, didn't we, about pe people and performance. And I think, um, you know, the, the performance probably improved a little bit. Um, and the people we had and the people that came on today um, stood up. And um, we knew after that first half um, going in, we had to try and match our level of emotion. And that was going to be the hardest thing. Um, you know, luckily, we did that. And credit to England, you know, the, the exchanges we had in our second half, we knew it was going to be a penalty or a turnover, um, potentially to decide the game. That's 12 wins on the bounce for Wales now. You are the history boys, the history men. How significant is that in the development of this side towards the World Cup? Um, oh, it's just another Saturday. Um, no, it's not, Alan Wynn. You've never done this before in the history of Welsh rugby. Yeah, I know, but we've got a squad of 40 blokes and a big backroom staff have put a lot into this. Um, as much as we know Moan as players, the union look after us, or try to, even though there's a lot of off -going, ongoings off-field in the miniature Wales, which probably aren't the prettiest. But, um, you know, credit to the regional teams as well that prepared the boys that have come here. And, and like I say, the score of 40. And ultimately, there's still a lot of people that are going to put their hands up to keep pushing this team and the individuals we got in it. Scotland lost today, but how do you view that challenge in two weeks' time? Um, you know, we've got another fallow week. we probably like to play again next week um, <laughs> to try and maintain momentum, like we said. So uh, having a week off is a dangerous thing. I'm sure um, Scotland will be licking their wounds and looking forward to us coming up there. Many congratulations. Thanks very much. 
Well, the players, a lot of the players still out on the field, but you could hear there's, there's still a lot of noise in this stadium, which is why Alvin Wynne Jones and actually everybody else finding it hard to say what, hear what Sonia was saying to them. I mean, the atmosphere, you could feel the noise when Corey Hill scored that try. You know, I took my headphones off. I can't remember a noise like that here, a real sense of how important that moment was. Yeah, it was, and the momentum was building. You could just feel it, couldn't you? And they've gone wide, you know, they've hammered away tight, gone 34 phases, got George North on the outside, and just look, believe in a pole, it doesn't need to go into that ruck. Look at the gap between him and Harry Williams. Harry Williams is trying his hardest to get there, to close the gap, and it's a great line from Corey Hill. Just there, quick, it goes low. We thought he might have just found believe it. It's on the line, it's a great finish. And it was just patience, and this didn't happen by accident. You know, they worked so hard for this, went through the phase, kept their discipline, and got on the edge, which we spoke about before the game, stretching the defence, and it's a great line from Corey Hill. But that, that's a great team try, and they imposed themselves. They did something, we were saying, no, don't try and do that, you'll get, you'll get smashed. And they said, no. We're going to have it, we're going to go forward, and they, they battered England backwards. What's great about that try is so many teams, we said this so many times, just get conservative in the 22, and I think Bigger needs a lot of credit there. He threw a really long, wide pass, which if that went wrong, he would have got slaughtered for it. But he took the risk, they went wide, and they got success from it. So you, know, we, we, you go in tight, and when you go tight, you've got to realise that the good tens will know when You've got to strike when the iron's hot, and, and Biggs picked that moment perfectly there. Well, we spent half time just debating when Bigger would come on, and he was on for 25 minutes, but he made a real contribution, didn't he? He did, you know, like Jonathan mentioned it at Dean Towns in comedy, such a cool head, you know, there was one torpedo kick where they were under pressure, Garth Davis had just had a kick charge down, but he had the composure, put clear the lines 50 metres, and, you know, he's the man eventually put the crossfield kick in for Josh Adams as well to get the try, so... Again, Gatland, he's the master of selection. You know, everybody was questioning, should we have started bigger? But this is this. They know they've got a shot to nothing. It's a pinpoint kick, and hats off to Josh Adams. You know, he's probably, you know, he doesn't get the highlights that Liam Williams and George North do, but he has been absolutely superb. And it's a great little side story for Josh Adams and Corey Hill. Two players who were both not wanted in Wales by the Regents. Josh Adams was let go by the Scarlets. Corey Hill let go by the Cardiff Blues. They've gone away. And they've just come back and they just proved to show you never give up. And they, you know, the Welsh heroes today. Shot to nothing. Uh, there was a penalty coming, but uh, Elliot Daly had fumbled a, a, an earlier high ball. He, his confidence couldn't have been high. And they tested it again. And Josh Adams uh, got a great skill set and was up there and, and balanced it a bit like Slade did when he scored against Ireland. Brilliant play again by Wales. That period of 15 or 20 minutes when everything seemed to be going wrong from an English perspective, you know, whether it was offence, whether it was penalties being given away, whether it was just, just basic errors, how, how does that manifest itself within the team when things like that start happening time after time? You've, you've got to recognise it and just say, boys, let's go, go, back to, go back to basics, everyone be super clean and we'll get back in this game. They, they actually they actually did it a little bit, but mm -hmm. then they'd make a mistake on the back of that. And they got nowhere near it, Jono. You, no. need to, you need to reset, and Owen was not in the zone. Owen had gone with his couple of mistakes. Sinclair was a time bomb. Sorry, when you, when you say that, when you say Owen had gone, do you mean that, that, that what we've seen for the first two matches where Owen Farrell has been the master puppeteer, what, he'd lost that ability to control I mean the game? What I mean is how accurate you are with your technical ability. There was a couple of kicks that were going off the side of his boot rather than the middle of his boot. You needed another, Billy Vanapolo, I thought, had a really strong game, but there was no one else really taking that but game. We spoke, it's been spoken about all week about this stadium, you know, the emotion, and on that 10 minute, it just completely changed, didn't it? You know, the crowd got behind Wales, and yeah, there was only one way traffic from that. Here is Warren Gatland. You had a very wry smile up in that commentary box when Josh Adams went over at the end. Just tell me the emotions that must be coursing through you right now, Warren Gatland. Well, it was just nice that when he went over, you knew he won, won the game, so that was uh, pretty special. Um, we created a lot of problems for ourselves in the first half of our turnovers. I didn't think England created anything, really didn't put us under any pressure. It was the pressure that we put on ourselves. and um, We were much better in, the, in that second half, and we got stronger as the game went on. And I just spoke to the guys in the change room and said that pain we went through last week and how hard we trained last week really paid dividends for us today. And we worked a lot on our pick and go. We thought there was an opportunity to to try and exploit uh, England in that area. Obviously, uh, our aerial game was really good today, so we'd been a lot of practice on that, and 
I thought, uh, you know, the second half and tactically we were really, really good. It was Corey Hill's try, which really was the defining moment for Wales. 34 phases that, that you went through. What does that say about how far this team have come, that they had the presence of mind and the patience to do that? Yeah, I think in the past, you know, we haven't been brilliant at that. But we've you know, said it's been one of the aspects that we've been working really hard on. And I said the first two games of the championship away from home, you know, we've... Haven't been brilliant, um, but I thought it was a, a massive step up today. It was it was tough and physical out there, and uh, the crowd were amazing. And uh, you know, it was a kind of felt it was a bit of a soft try for England, you know, 10-3 down half time. And Sean, let's, Sean Edwards said, you know, let's get him to 16, maybe two penalties in the second half, and then he's got three points. So um, you know, it was. Uh, it was, a, it was a great second half from us. You did mention Carl Sinclair in the build-up to this game, and there he was, off he went on the 60-minute mark. Again, you're smiling. Do you, do you think that England slightly lost their heads a little bit in a way that Wales didn't to, in terms of the penalty count, which was very much in your favour? Um, look, there was two or three penalties he'd, he'd given away then at, at that stage, and they'd obviously made a, a tactical substitution. Um, you know, he's not my player, so you know. Even though I did comment on him when asked <laughs> the question, not you know, I did, it wasn't something I raised. It was something that was raised by one of the journalists, obviously, to try and get uh, because you know everyone's seen what we, we've all seen. So, um, uh, but look, it's, uh, it's about our players so today, and um, we're going to enjoy tonight. And um, just said in the change rooms, you know, now that we've done that, you know, we've got to go out there and um, try and win this championship. Wales World Cup contenders. Um, apparently not, from a lot of uh, a lot of uh, pundits out there. But so uh, we just uh, keep a head down and just uh, keep going under, keeping under the radar if we possibly can. Is this now the greatest Welsh team ever? Oh, no. <laughs> that would be disrespectful for uh, to a lot of that you know that great team of the seventies and you know, it was one hundred and what thirteen years ago I think that one hundred nine years ago that uh, team had you know for four years undefeated. So. Um, uh, look, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty special group of boys at the moment. Um, they, um, you know, Rob Evans said to me the other day, he says there's not one person in the squad that I wouldn't want to, you know, do something for in terms of, you know, that's how tight they are. They're, they're, they're a brilliant, brilliant group at the moment. Well done to you, Warren. Thank you, cheers. Well, some facts and figures of what was a, an epic match. I mean, it may not have been the most dramatic in terms of tries scored and open free-flowing rugby, but it was just absolutely riveting. And England made 99 more tackles than Wales in that game. Martin? Well, that's how they've been playing. You know, they, and they, they tried to stick to their kicking game. It just didn't work as well. They didn't kick quite as well. Wales handled it a lot, lot better. And ultimately, you know, we said at half-time, England will try and strangle Wales. And actually, Wales strangled England. I, th I think the penalty count was crucial as well. You know, three times as many penalties, nine to England, three only three in a Test match. That's, that in, that's incredible. That, that, yeah, that it? is huge. That is that is ultimately for me why they won the game today. The discipline in a white hot atmosphere to keep that discipline. That's one good. of the big changes in international rugby, and I think Ireland started it by getting that low penalty count. It, it just denies the opposition momentum. We talked about the kicking statistics of England at the beginning of the game and the tackle count in the opposition half. I suspect that one of those is going to be really the other end, particularly the tackles in the opposition half. England didn't dominate that uh, the territory game enough or weren't strong enough, and they, they lost, I think, the aerial battle. That's what it seemed to be, a gut feeling. England have uh, Italy coming up next. Do they stick to this kicking game, come what may, because this is the route to Japan? You naturally play different against a side that really isn't going to be as, give you as much pressure as a Welsh defensive line did today. I thought Welsh defensive line was really, really strong. I, I think England, you know, the, the game pass worked for them so well. Can't remember they won the Six Nations two years in a row, only going back with this group of players going back three, four years ago. Like you, you could bring on Owen Farrell and George Ford to bring that axis back again to try and go dip into a plan B, but they just didn't want to move away from plan A. Mano Tuolangi, yeah. you, you look at the distra well, not the, the, the distraction he caused against Ireland. Those two balls that went wide and England went down the touchlines was because of Manu. He, was, he made one great run today. Apart from that, he, a couple of big tackles, he was non-existent. A ball player like that who's so competitive, you've got to bring into the game, and that's a huge disappointment. I think England certainly will want to look at the game with the ball in their hands and, and get better at that. It's always the hardest thing to do, is the attacking game. And they've, they've got you know a lot, a lot of progress. There's a lot of potential there. They, they, they can get a lot better in that area. A point I would suspect that Eddie Jones would concur with.
How did England lose that test match, having built up a lead at half-time? Uh, it was one of those nip and tuck games. Um, and it's a game of small margins and we let ourselves down a couple of areas. They beat us in the air. Uh, penalty count was strongly against us. I think it ended up 9-3. And that gives the opposition field position a chance to score points and that's what happened. How frustrated are you by that penalty count? Because when we saw you gave the Shepherds crook to old Carl Sinclair and there was a little bit of extras on the touchline. He had Alan Wynne jones in a neck hold at one point. Did England start to lose their heads a little bit? Oh, look, it was a tough game. Um, I don't know whether we lost our heads, but uh, they put us under a lot of pressure. Yeah, you're always going to get some tough calls in these games when you're away from home, and that happened tonight. Yeah. Owen Farrell, by his own admission just now, said that he didn't have his best game in an England jersey. Did you lack a bit of control from him at 10? Oh, I just think a few of our players were a bit off today, and, and that happens sometimes. And you know, That's the great thing about rugby. You never know what's actually going to happen. And full credit to Wales, they deserve the victory and played very well. How big a setback is this when you'd sort of built the momentum that you had, that you'd played so well in the, in the first two tests of this of this championship? Well, every, everything's about ebb and flow. And, uh, you know, we had, we had a fair bit of flow. We've come back a bit today, but we'll pick that up again for the Italian game. Yeah, so going ahead to the Italian game, what, what do you do now? Do you, do you stick with this kicking game that seems to be um, your SP at the moment? Well, it's about attacking space and... Uh, we didn't attack space well today. We didn't create space well, and, and uh, we'll just find a different way to attack Italy. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks. Talking about Manu Tuolangi being very much a peripheral figure today, Liam Williams, we talked about him before the game, saying that how he responded to England's aerial bombardment would be key in determining the outcome of the game. He was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Positionally as well, and these are things which people probably just t take for granted when they see this, but he was where he was supposed to be in the backfield. He was fantastic in the high ball, and that's always been a strength of Liam Williams. He's probably been one of the best players in the world at that. You know, not many guys get that ball off him from, from the air, but he was just, he was rock solid for Wales. He's been rock solid for the last three weeks, hasn't he? But he's brilliant today as well. He's a brilliant player. You know, he wins a penalty as well later on in the contact area where he gets his head over the ball and wins a crucial three points for Wales. So, you know, he knew he was going to be tested. Obviously, a teammate of Owen Farrell, no, so he sort of kicked, but he was, I thought he was brilliant today. Did you really expect that to happen today? No, I didn't. I, I'll be honest, uh, I, I thought I predicted England would win. Uh, I didn't want it to happen, obviously, which is why I didn't really want to say it. But um, you know, I thought England were going to win. I just thought the form that they had in the last two weeks, and they've, they've won here in 2015 and 2017, so the players know how to come here and, and manage the crowd. But, uh, yeah, today, you know, I, I was trying to give an insightful... A uh, bit of analysis to people when they ask me, but I said, well, anything could happen. If I had to say, I guess, England, but anything could happen and it proved, proved the case. Well, you, you probably didn't think it would happen like it happened. In, oh, in Wales, no. dominant, you know, sort of getting on top in the forwards and, and carrying. And a, a lot of that is, is, is just will. It's will to win and they, they got the momentum. And everything we said England don't need to do, get into referee trouble, get the crowd in the game, all happened. And suddenly, you know, Liam Williams got better and better. Wales got better and better. Ten minutes to go. England needed a miracle to win. Someone to pull something out of the bag and, and they couldn't do it. And it was all everything you didn't need to do in the second half when you're away in Wales. Uh, as, as in the first half, they actually went the opposite and played very well. I think everybody was focusing on the opening two games of the Six Nations on the outcome of this result. And people forgot that this Welsh team as a squad you know, have won 11 in a row. So that belief it gives you when you're out on the park and on the on the park and it's still tight that you're a group you know how to win a game I just think that was ultimately in a home crowd as well that momentum just changed on about that 50 minute mark and Wales got stronger and stronger which they usually do in the second half Technically I thought Wales was supreme to go through those phases without making a mistake knocking the ball in letting someone come in in a jackal was absolutely brilliant and summed up their performance it was pretty immaculate well, it was a fantastic test match. I'm, I'm sure you enjoyed it. And we'll chat more for the next 20 minutes or so on the red button. So, so do come and join us there in about a minute's time. Next up for Wales, obviously, it's Scotland and Ireland en route to a Grand Slam. England very much second best in the Dragon's Den tonight. And Wales really have forgotten how to lose. Bye-bye. There is a storm awaiting. It's a great place to be. Wales versus England in round three of the Six Nations. I hear the calls again. Let the rain and the storms begin. That's when they thought it was over.